Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to Reddit Bingo Rex. If you do not know what Reddit Bingo is, it is a thing that the Reddit, um, the fantasy subreddit does every single year. And it strangely enough doesn't run from like January to December. It's kind of strange to me. It starts in like March, I think. I don't know. I'm like definitely late to this. Um, but I've been following along for quite some time now. Like I always see it on Reddit um, ever since I started being on Reddit, basically, which is the last like few years. Um, but I've always followed along, but I've never like partaken because like, I feel like there's just a lot of rules. There's a lot of rules. And if you know me, you know that I don't do a TBR. I don't do structure. I don't do rules. It's just not it's not for me. However, I watch a lot of like Reddit bingo rack videos. And I just wanted to like, go through the list. Um, and what I started doing in the last couple of years, which I haven't like talked about is that like, at the end of the year, I'll like look through and just see if anything I've read has like fit into Reddit bingo. Um, and so I thought that this year, I would do that at the beginning of the year, but not really. I don't know, this is kind of like an off the cuff video, we're gonna kind of, we're kind of gonna be like reacting to the categories, I guess, because I haven't actually looked through all of them. Um, and then I'm going to talk about like some books that I've read that I think would fit this prompt or like um, books that I have on my radar on my TBR that I think might fit this prompt. Um, so it's not so much recommendations as just like chatting through the categories and like pitching and talking about like potential books that might fit the criteria. Um, so without further ado, I will get started. Um, I will link down below the actual like link to the Reddit bingo um, if you are interested in partaking yourself. Okay, first things first, there are a couple of rules for this. So the like eligibility period is from April 1st to March 31st. And in terms of like re repeat books, rereads, these are their rules. So you can't use the same book for more than one square. Um, and you may not repeat an author on the card, except you may reuse an author from the short story square, as long as you're not using a short story collection, but just um, one author from that square. So I assume like if you read an anthology, for example, or if you read like a singular short story from an author and not a whole collection, then you can like reuse that author. Um, and then only one square can be a reread. All other books must be first time reads. Like this is why I've never played this game because it's like so restrictive. And you know me, I love reading from the same authors. I love rereads, okay? Like this is just so not catered to me as a human being. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. So um, in terms of substitutions, you may substitute one square from the 2024 card with a square from a previous R Fantasy bingo card if you wish. In terms of the difficulty, there's like the base prompt. And then I know that there's also like a hard mode. So anyway, let's dive into the actual prompts. Um, number one is first in a series, read the first book in a series. So that's obviously like very broad, you literally could pick up any book really. <laughs> and it would fit this the hard mode for this is the series is more than three books long. Okay, so that is probably where I would go. Like, I feel like this hard mode is like kind of easy. There's no there I don't know if there's anything that says like, if you start on hard mode for one, you have to do hard mode for all of them, like to like complete the thing. I don't know. But I feel like for me, a series that is more than three books long that I can think of off the top of my head that I would want to like recommend for this is The Grace of Kings, which is four books long. Um, also, The Trader Brew Cormorant is also longer than four books. I think only three books are out currently. I don't know if the fourth book came out. Um, but I think it's planned to be five books. Another series would be the Blood Mercy series, the Blood Grace series by Vila Roth. Um, that is currently sitting at seven books, but I think the eighth book comes out next week, the week after, something like that. Um, are we allowed to do middle grade for these? Because I feel like a lot of middle grade series would fit this. Like a lot of middle grade series are more than three books long. Um, also the Night Runner series, which is not one that I feel like a lot of people talk about. And that's one that I've only read the first book for. And what is the first book called? Couldn't tell you, but I will put, <laughs> I'll put the picture up here. It is a classic fantasy from, I think, the 80s or the 90s, and it is queer, and it is just like a fun, classic adventure romp type of situation. I really need to continue on in that series, um, but that could be a good one. Um, moving on to number two, alliterative title. Read a book where multiple words in the title begin with the same letter. For example, Legends and Lattes, A Storm of Swords. 
Um, Children of Blood and Bone, Hard Mode. The title has three words or more that start with the same letter. This is going to require some thinking. Um, Off the top of my head, I can think of like Eva Evergreen and... I don't know what the subtitle is, but Eva Evergreen, it's not hard mode, but it could fit. Um, that is a middle grade fantasy book. Oh, um, Son of the Storm and Warrior of the Wind, um, books one and two respectively. Obviously, you can't use both of them in the challenge, but you could use, if you've already read book one, you can do book two. If you haven't read book one, you could read book one. Um, but neither of those are hard mode. I can't actually think of one that's for hard mode. Can I? A Psalm of Storms and Silence. That's only two. Psalm starts with a P. I don't know. I really don't know. Anyway, moving on. Number three, under the surface, read a book where an important setting is either underground or underwater. Um, hard mode, at least half the book takes place underground or underwater. Um, I would say off the top of my head, Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. Um, and that would definitely qualify for hard mode, I think, because half the story takes place underwater. It's about these two women um, who are wives, obviously. One of them is a um, marine biologist. Is that what they're called? I don't know. But she like goes on this like submarine expedition and she comes back and she's like obviously suffering from PTSD. Something's not quite right with her. So half the book is told in the present day from her wife's perspective about um, her when she comes back and reflecting on the relationship and how it's developed. And then the other half is like the flashbacks of when she was under the sea. So I feel like that would work for this one, especially for hard mode. Um, another book is, it's not going to qualify for hard mode, but if you haven't read Heart of the Sun Warrior yet by Su Lin Tan, that's the second book in the Celestial Kingdoms duology, the first book being Daughter of the Moon Goddess, there is a chunk of the book that takes place underwater. I'm not going to say too much beyond that, but there is um, a section of the book that takes place in like an underwater palace situation. Um, number four, criminals. Read a book in which the main character is a criminal. This could be a thief, assassin, someone who commits mail fraud, etc. Um, hard mode is it features a heist. Um, obviously the most recent one I've read is A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. Does this qualify as a heist? I guess it is kind of a heist. Another one that could fit this, but I don't know if it would qualify for heist. I feel like there is some heisting involved in it, but I can't remember if it's in book one or not. Um, but the Alchemist of Loom series by Elise Kova, that could be a good one. Another book that I read last year, um, There Will Come a Darkness this is a YA fantasy, um, features one character who is a um also like a vigilante type character like she kills um bad people essentially what else could fit in here foundry side by robert jackson bennett i didn't love that book but it does feature a heist i think there's a lot of options where people are criminals could you count the poppy war because let's be real she's a fucking war criminal isn't she but anyway moving on <laughs> Um, number five, dreams. Read a book where characters experience dreams, magical or otherwise. Hard mode. The dream is not mystical or unusual, just a normal dream or nightmare. I feel like um, not for hard mode, but um, I feel like a good one to fit for this is the Dream Blood duology by uh, N.K. Jemisin. So the first one is The Killing Moon. Um, it features like dream magic. And so like the character's can manipulate dreams obviously that would not satisfy hard mode because the, the the dreams are not mystical or unusual um but i think that if you haven't read that and you don't care about hard mode that would be a really good book um another book i read recently that features dreams is the eyes are the best part by monica kim this is a horror novel and the main character experiences a lot of dreams about like eating eyeballs and they're not like mystical they're just like regular regular weird dreams um so that would fulfill hard mode I want to say like The Chosen and the Beautiful by Neva also has some like dream situations going on. But I on honestly, it's been so long since I've read it that I can't actually say. Um, so that's like a very tentative recommendation. Um, number six is Entitled Animals. Read a book that has an animal in the title. The animal in the title does not have to appear in the story. Examples, The Raven Tower, Wolf Song, A Feast for Crows. Um, hard mode. The animal in the title is a fantasy or sci-fi creature, i.e. the last unicorn, Leviathan Wakes, or the Kaiju Preservation Society. Well, the Kaiju Preservation Society is actually one that I've read and that I would wholeheartedly recommend. <laughs> I think it's a fun sci-fi romp. If you're into the kind of like Jurassic 
park type of vibe. I think you would really enjoy the Kaiju Preservation Society. Like, it's very just, like, funny, fun. I know that a lot of people don't like John Scalzi's work, um, so your mileage may vary, um, but this is the only John Scalzi I've read, and I thought it was a really fun time, personally. I feel like surely there's a book with Phoenix in the title. You know what I mean? Like, that feels like something that someone has written. Um, The Phoenix King. Um, This is a fantasy. I think it's a debut. I think it used to be self-published and then it was picked up by Orbit. I haven't read this yet, but I want to. Um, And I think this would be a good one. And that's the one I was thinking of that was like, has Phoenix in the title. Um, And that's probably the one that I would say like, I would try to read for this prompt because like I said, I haven't read it. I've been meaning to read it for some time. Oh, um, Mammoths at the Gates um, by Neva. Obviously this is book four in the Singing Hills cycle, um, but if you haven't read that one yet, highly recommend it. That obviously doesn't fulfill um, the hard mode. Though, it's an extinct animal. Does it count as like a fantasy animal? Because they don't exist anymore, right? Do mammoths exist? I don't think so. They've gone extinct, haven't they? I'm just like fully revealing my ignorance right now, I feel. Um, <laughs> anyway, next. Um, bards. Read a book in which the primary protagonist is is a bard, musician, poet, or storyteller. The character is explicitly called a bard for hard mode. Um, Not hard mode, but obviously the Singing Hills cycle, if you haven't read that. The main character is a um, storyteller of sorts. Like, they... it's, It's not so much that they tell the stories, but they, like document stories um so i feel like that counts right that counts i never finished the book um but i believe the ballad of perilous graves i believe perry is a musician or at least like there's some sort of like a magical piano situation there's a lot of music involved so i feel like that would count as well i can't i genuinely can't think of one where a main character is a bard though like who would be a bard that is a main character? Like, I feel like bards are always, like, secondary characters. You know what I mean? If you have any that you know of, let me know in the comments. Um, number eight, prologues and epilogues. Um, read a book that has either a prologue or an epilogue. Hard mode, the book The book must have both. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, like, what does or doesn't have a prologue and epilogue. So I'm going to skip this. I do know, actually for a fact that um, The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winters has a killer prologue. It is the only part of that book that I genuinely thought was like ace. (laughs) Um, I don't remember if it has an epilogue though, but I feel like this is quite an easy one. I feel like a lot of fantasy books have prologues and epilogues. Um, And so I do feel as though you would not struggle with this category. Um, Number nine, self-published or indie publisher. Self-published or published through an indie publisher. If a formerly self-published novel has been picked up by a publisher, it only counts for this challenge if you read it when it was still only self-published. Hard mode, self-published and has fewer than 100 ratings on Goodreads or an indie publisher that has done an AMA with our fantasy. I am not familiar with the fantasy subreddit like that, so I have no idea who has and hasn't done an AMA with them. For self-published in less than 100 ratings, I haven't read any self-published, I feel like, with that few ratings, but I have read indie published with very few ratings. There was a book I read a couple of years ago that was sent to me by the publisher. They are in indie press. Um, and they sent me a book called Vacant Steps by Stephen Sai. This is a Mongolian inspired fantasy. The author is Filipino, I believe, Filipino American. I'm not sure. But the story itself is about um, different nomadic tribes um, in this kind of like fantasy Mongolia inspired setting. Um, and it is interesting. I just thought it was like very short. Um, and it wasn't like my favorite book, but it's definitely one that I feel like more people should pick up. And I think that especially if you are less character driven and you're more like plot driven as a reader, I think you would enjoy it more than I did. Um, other self-published books. There's so many self-published books I love. Obviously all the like Vila Roths, the Elise Kova's. I believe Elise Kova is self-published. I could be wrong on this one. Um, Trudy Skies as well. The author of the, 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 the what's it called? The Cruel God series. Um, another indie publisher that I really like is Stellaform Press. They are a Canadian indie press and they primarily publish um, climate speculative fiction. I really enjoy the work that they do, though I haven't read a lot of their books. The only ones that I own and the only one of the two that I own are or Arbor Reality by, uh, I can't remember the author's name, um, but this author is from Canada. I believe she's from Victoria, BC. The other one I love is uh, After the Dragons, which, and, and these are both novellas. Um, in general, if you're into climate fiction, I recommend checking Stellaform Press out. I really enjoy 
their works, what they're doing. I think they do some cool stuff. Uh, number 10, Romanticy. Read a book that features romance as a main plot. This must be speculative in nature, but does not have to be fantasy. That's interesting. I don't think I've read any fantasy like sci-fi, for example. The hard mode is the main character is LGBTQIA+. Um, the one that comes to the top of my mind for this is um, The Alchemist of Loom by Elise Kobo. And I believe that is the title of the first book and not the title of the series. But I do think that this is not known particularly as a queer fantasy romance because the main coupling is male-female. But our female main character, she is pansexual. And that is like in canon. It's not just like me being like classic me and being like everyone's a little bit bad. You know what I mean? It is definitely a queer fantasy romance, which again, I don't think a lot of people realize about this series i don't know like when i heard about the series i never heard anyone say that it was queer um and also one of the side couplings is sapphic as well so highly recommend that if you're not specifically looking for like hard mode um then i would recommend obviously my beloved <laughs> blood mercy by vila roth um there is a side couple that is um queer however the main couple is not so that would not uh, fit for hard mode. Other options, especially for hard mode, um, A Strange and Stubborn Endurance, that is a male-male couple. Um, I really enjoyed that. The sequel less so, but I really enjoyed the first book of that. I'm just gonna say here, just so you can read this book in one of the categories, The Emperor and the Endless Palace by Justinian Huang. However, I would not call this like a fantasy romance, but it does feature like a love story as a main plot. So like... I feel like you could if you wanted to read this book and you wanted to like finagle something in here, but maybe you're not like a super heavy like romance reader. You don't love romance. Maybe this could be a good fit for you. Like I do feel like you could kind of finagle it in here, but I don't think that this book is strictly a romance um, simply because it does not have a happily ever after, but it is queer. It is a love story. It is such a beautiful book. I love it. Also, if the publishers are going to market this as romanticy, I feel like I can squeeze it in this category. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, moving on, because I feel like there's still so many more categories and I can't shut up, apparently. Um, dark Academia. Read a book that fits the Dark Academia aesthetic. This includes school and university, secret societies, and dark secrets. It does not have to be fantasy, but it must be speculative. Um, hard mode is the school itself is entirely mundane. Disregarding hard mode, easy ones to recommend are Blood Over Bright Haven by M.L. Wong, Babel by R.F. Kuang, The Center, which I read recently, which I would call speculative, like lit fic. Catherine House is also a really good one for this. Again, speculative, but not fantasy per se. Hard mode, the school itself is entirely mundane. Of all of these, I would say Catherine House is the closest fit to this. Like the school is mostly mundane. It's like not really, but kind of, you know what I mean? Um, if we're talking about just the aesthetic of Dark Academia and we're talking like secret societies, dark secrets, a book that I haven't read yet is Legendborn. Um, I've heard really good things about this book. Um, I just haven't read it yet. I know that features like a secret society at a university kind of situation. Um, and this one, I feel like maybe the school itself is entirely mundane because it takes place at an actual university, I think. Um, and I think that the magical stuff is what happens in the secret society, if I'm not mistaken, and not the school itself. So that could be a hard mode contender. But again, I haven't read the book. So like, I can't say for sure. Um, number 12, multi POV, read a book with at least three point of view characters. Um, hard mode is at least five point of view characters. The easy answer for this is the Dandelion Dynasty um, by Ken Liu. There are so many fucking POVs. So many fucking POVs. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how many at this point. Um, I think Malazan also has like a bajillion POVs. Um, I mean, of the like 30% of the first book I read, I feel like I've already surpassed at least three POVs at least probably over five at this point. Another good one for this would be um, Upon a Burning Throne by Asha K. Banker. That also has at least three, but probably more than five, if I'm remembering correctly. Maybe not in book one, um, more than five POV characters, but across the series for sure. Um, but definitely more than three. Um, another book recently that I read that has more than three, I don't know if it has more than five, but definitely more than three is uh, the Violet Cooper Smith book. What's it called? Build Your House Around My Body. This is a kind of like horror adjacent, but like more of like the dark humor type of horror. Um, and it has like multiple timelines, multiple POVs. I really enjoyed it. Um, 
I will link down below the podcast that I did um, with the Dog Eared Book Club um, about this book. If you are interested or if you've read it and you want like a recap, I will link that down below. Number 13, published in 2024, a book published for the first time in 2024. No reprints or new editions. First translations into your language of choice are allowed. Um, Hard Mode is it is also the author's first published novel. Um, a couple that I've already mentioned that would also fit into this is uh, Emperor in the Endless Palace, I believe came out earlier this year. Um, the Eyes Are the Best Part by Monica Kim, that comes out later this year, I think. Um, and again, let me look on my neck galley because I feel like that is a good place to go. Um, Blood of the Old Kings by Sunil Kim. This is translated by Anton Hur um, from Korean. And I don't know when it originally came out, but the translation is coming out this year. Um, I don't know if this is a debut, but certainly I think the first of this author's works in English. Other books published in 2024. I feel like there's so many 2024 releases that we could put in here. But anyway, number 14, character with a disability. Read a book in which an important character has a mental or physical disability. Hard mode, a main character has a physical or mental disability. The first book that comes to mind is The Wall of Storms by Ken Liu. Um, obviously, if you've read The Grace of Kings for one of the other prompts, you can't do this one. But if you've read The Grace of Kings um, already and you haven't read Wall of Storms, Wall of Storms does feature a character with a physical disability. Other easy ones for this obviously the percy jackson series um with the adhd rep and the dyslexia rep um there was one that came out a while ago and i haven't read it yet but it's like a three musketeers retelling i think it's called like one for all or something um and this features a character with chronic illness um and i haven't read this like i said but this is um a three musketeers retelling i don't know if it's fantasy i think it's fantasy i don't know i just assume that any book that comes on my timeline is fantasy because that's just usually what i engage with i think the obvious one that i think a lot of people will be reading for this is going to be fourth wing um which does have disability rep in it um again do i recommend the book not really but like if you're bored and you know you want to read it sure Oh, another book that I've already mentioned for like a previous prompt, but would definitely fit in here is Upon a Burning Throne by Asha K. Banker. Um, this features both a character that is blind and also a character that has albinism. Um, so that would fit and it would certainly fit for hard mode because these are like the two main characters. But moving on, number 15, published in the 1990s. Read a book that was published in the 1990s. Hard mode is the author or one of the authors has also published something in the last five years. I feel as though my go-to recommendation for like a 90s author is Tamara Pierce. I think that my favorite series, which is Song of the Lioness, is kind of like the first one. So that would be in the eighties, but I'm thinking like the immortal series is probably from the nineties and that is a good series. And that's like a nice starting point as well. I feel like for the Tortal universe, maybe some of the like circle of magic books also might be from the nineties, but I'm not sure. Cause I've never read those ones. Um, has she put out anything in the last five years though? That's the real question. I feel like, um, new mare's book came out, but I think that was like, more than five years ago now. Um, I'm not sure. I'm really struggling for this category. I, I think this is definitely like a gap in my fantasy knowledge because I feel like if I'm going for like an older classic, I'm going for like 80s or be like older. And then I feel like the 1990s is like a gap for me, you know? Um, okay, moving on again because we got to move on. <laughs> orcs, trolls, and goblins. Oh my. Read a book featuring orcs, trolls, or goblins. Hard mode as a main character. Um, Legends and Lattes? Is Viv an orc? I think she's an orc. Isn't she an orc? I don't know. But again, I don't feel like I read that many fantasy series that have these creatures in them. Um, anyway, space opera. Uh, read a sci-fi book that features a large cast of characters and has a focus on social dynamics, which may be political or personal in nature, set primarily in space or on spaceships. Um... Hard Mode, written by an author of marginalized gender identity, i.e. women, trans people, or non-binary people. Um, okay, I feel like where I'm getting stumped is like the large class of characters. The one that I can think of off the top of my head is Ex Escaping Exodus by Nikki Drayden. I just don't know how large the cast of characters is because I do feel like we focus on like a few main characters. Um, but I do feel like 
I would consider a space opera. So I'm going to put it in here. That is also obviously going to be fulfilling the hard mode um, prompt. Um, one that I started but DNF'd is Genesis of Misery by Neon Yang. Um, also, I don't know how large the cast of characters is, but is also a book I would consider a space opera. Uh, a middle grade space opera would be, what's the Yoon Ha Lee one called? Dragon Pearl. Um, and I didn't like the second book, but I really like the first book in that series. Um, and I do still plan on reading book three in that series um, and would definitely qualify for hard mode as well. And then a book that I haven't read yet that I own and I need to read because <laughs> Orbit very kindly sent it to me is The Stars Undying by... I've forgotten the author's name. Again, it would fit for hard mode. Um, and I do believe it does actually have a large cast of characters. And it is a space opera retelling of, I think, um, Anthony and Cleopatra, I believe. Mm, yes, maybe, possibly. Um, <laughs> number 18 is Author of Color. Read a book by an author of color. Hard mode is must be a debut novel published in the last five years. Um, I feel like because I primarily, I feel, read from authors of color, a lot of the books that I've already mentioned are by authors of color. Um, in terms of debut novels published in the last five years, so many. But like I said, the one from this year obviously is... Um, Emperor in the Endless Palace, um, I would say um, Daughter of the Moon Goddess. Um, did A Song of Wraith and Ruin come out in the last five years? I feel like it did. It came out in 2020, didn't it? I don't know. I would say that that was a really great one by Roseanne A. Brown if you are looking for um, a YA fantasy debut in the last five years by an author of color. Um, Chlorine by Jade Song, one of my favorite speculative novels to come out in the last five years. Um, the Jessup Air by Sarah Hashem, which I believe is a debut. Also, why am I blanking on debuts? Like, I'm really, I'm really struggling <laughs> with who was a debut author. Um, oh, Jordan Ifueko. Um, what's that book called? Ray Bear. I think that's a debut. I'm pretty sure that's her debut. Um, that's a really good YA fantasy as well. Anyway, 19, survival. Read a book in which the primary goal of the characters and story sur focuses on survival. Surviving an apocalypse, surviving a war, surviving high school, etc. Hard mode is no super viruses or pandemics. Again, I feel like this is like quite common in the sci-fi fantasy space but let me think if i'm thinking apocalyptic fiction it's gonna be uh parable of the sower by octavia e butler um the fifth season by nk jemison um and i think neither of these are super viruses or pandemics or like caused by that i don't think um in terms of surviving a war it's got to be the Poppy War series by by RF Kuang. And then number 20, judge a book by its cover. Choose a book because you like its cover. Um, hard mode, pick the book based only on the information available on the cover. No reading the blurb. Ooh, I mean, this is going to be up to you, I think, probably, right? Let's actually see what books I've added to my TBR purely based on the cover. Because I definitely have one of these. I can tell you right now off the top of my head, a book that I read based on the cover alone and I ended up DNFing because I didn't actually end up liking it. It's like deep as the sea, red as the sky, something like that. Um, it's like that weird pirate book. I thought it was going to be fantasy, but I don't think it's actually that fantasy. Um, <laughs> so that is definitely one that I p added p to my TBR purely based on the cover. I knew nothing about it. Oh, and then one that I added because I saw it in the store. And again, I don't really know what it's about, um, but it was in the horror section. So I assume it is um, speculative, but the new Soul Park Jelly Massacre. Um, do I know what this book is about? No, but the title and like the cover looks so fun. Another cover ad for me on my want to read on Goodreads is Gorgeous Gruesome Faces by Linda Cheng. Um, again, don't know anything about this book. I think it's like horror-ish. I don't know. Curious Tides by Pascal Lassell. Um, also don't know what this is about. I just like the cover. Catfish Rolling by Clara Kumagai. Also don't know what this is about. Just love the cover. More Perfect by Tammy O was also a cover ad for me, but specifically this cover. And I do also know that it is an Orpheus and Eurydice sci-fi retelling, so it doesn't qualify for hard mode, but this was a cover buy for me personally. Yeah. Um, and let's move on to the fifth and final row. Um, number 21 is set in a small town. Primary setting is a small town. Hard mode is the small town can be real or fictional, but the broader setting must be our real world and not a secondary world. The only book I'm thinking of right now is the Premi Muhammad one, The Annual Migration of Clouds. I don't remember much about this book. I just know that it takes place in post-climate like climate change to climate 
disaster. Um, Alberta, I want to say. It's definitely one of the like middle provinces in Canada. I haven't read it yet, but I'm pretty sure Moon of the Crust of Snow by Wabgishik Rice uh, takes place in a small town. I also think that this takes place like in our real world. Like I don't think it's a fictional secondary world. Um, number 22 is five SFF short stories. Any five short stories or novelettes. Um, hard mode is read an entire speculative anthology or collection. Obviously, I have to wreck Ken Liu's collection of short stories. Um, I've only read The Paper Menagerie and Other Stories. Um, I've read, like, most of that collection. I haven't finished all of them, um, but I've read most of that collection. I think they're fantastic. One of the ones that I really want to read that I haven't read yet is Exhalation by Ted Chiang. And if you have, like, Kindle Unlimited, I also feel like going for one of those, like, short story collection thingies that they do um, is a really good option. Um, obviously, it seems like you can just read any five SFF short stories and you don't have to read the specific, like, anthology unless you want to do hard mode. Um, so maybe you could, like, mix and match. Like, the ones that I've read that I really liked are the Nevo one um, and the Tamsin Weir one, which are both from the horror collection, which also has the Alex E. Harrow one that is like viral that went everywhere for a while. I also started but haven't finished because I wanted to read the audiobook version instead. Uh, the N.K. Jemison one. Um, I've forgotten the title now, but it's from the sci-fi collection. And the reason why I wanted to read it via audio is because Jason Isaacs uh, narrates it. But I also know that Sylvia Moreno Garcia has a new, like, Amazon original short story situation that came out last year. Um, number 23, Eldritch Creatures. Read a book featuring a being that is uncanny, unearthly, and weird. This can be a god or monster from another plane or realm and is usually beyond mortal understanding. See this link for further information. Hard mode. The book is not related to Cthulhu mythos. I don't know anything about Eldritch Horror, okay? I do know that apparently um, Gunmetal Gods features Eldritch creatures of some sort. I DNF'd that book. It was not for me. But I did also read the prequel novella to that, and I do vaguely remember there being like weird shit going on. Um, so I feel like that could be a good fit for this prompt. Um, I'm sure there are other ones that I'm just not thinking of right now, but that's the first one that comes to my head. Um, number 24, reference materials. Read a book that features additional materials such as a map, footnotes, glossaries, translation guide, drama dramatis, personae, personae, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. Hard mode is um, a book that contains at least two types of additional materials. I feel like that's easy because I feel like if it has one, it probably has another one. Um, the Lock Tomb series definitely has more than one um, type of reference material. Like there's the cast list, the dramatis, whatever, whatever. And then there's like a chunk at the end that where they talk about like other stuff, though I don't know if that's just the paperback version. I think that might be a paperback exclusive, um, but they do have that. Um, again, The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu <laughs> has all of these and more. Um, Battle by Arv Kwong would have a lot of these things. Maps, I feel like, are very easy to come by, um, as well as glossaries. Like, I know for sure, um, the fifth season, what's it called? What's the series called? The Broken Earth Trilogy. That definitely has a glossary. There's the Adrian Tchaikovsky book, I know, has a massive cast list at the beginning. Um, what's it called? City of Lost Chances. I never read it. I didn't get past the fucking cast list. I looked at it, and I was like, the brain cells are not brain selling. I can't read this. <laughs> But that one has that. Anyway, moving on to the last category, that is book club or read-along book. Any past or active R fantasy book clubs count, as well as past or active R fantasy read-along. See our full list of book clubs here. Um, note, all of the current book club information can also be found, blah, 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 whatever. Hard mode must read a current selection of either a book club or read-along to participate and participate in the discussion. I cannot be bothered to go through these book clubs and their lists. Um, so we're going to leave it at that. We're just going to call this video my sort of fantasy Reddit bingo recommendations slash potential books to read list. I don't know. I don't. I really don't know what the point of this video was other than to just like chat through these. I think they're all really fun prompts. And honestly, like I commend whoever it is that like comes up with these every single year because like I could never um and so anyway this was really fun I don't know if I will actually actively participate I will probably just do what I normally do which is just at the end of the year I can look back and just see if I can like slot things in you know what I'm saying um and let me know if you want to see a follow-up video to this like next year at the end of the the reddit bingo um 
eligibility period and see if I actually was able to bingo. But yeah, that is it for today. That is it for this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know if you are participating in Reddit Fantasy Bingo, if you have any recommendations for any of the prompts we talked about today. Um, and if you like this video and you want to see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Thank you.